Brother lads, welcome back to the Kosi Asana Podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to a brand new video. This latest is Aston News and Transfer News as well. Charles Watts has given us a major update regarding Benjamin Sesko and why Aston made him the priority and number one target as per his sources. We're going to be diving into why Victor Yokores, according to Charles Watts, is known a striker that's going to be joining Aston this summer and so is Alexander Isak. How close is the decision and how quick can we get to know um, what comes out of the Benjamin Sesko uh, discussion with Arabi Leipzig as well. There's a lot uh, going on when it comes to what Arsenal want in the transfer window. But what we know and what we can confirm right now is that we are not going to see a crazy Declan Rice summer signing. We're not going to see an 80, 90 million pound signing or even a 100 million pound signing. Uh, Charles Boy says it's going to be more of um, uh, of signings across the shop. It's going to be uh, of you know money sp you know spread across the shop rather than spending huge amounts of money on one player. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. Now we did talk about Benjamin Sesco yesterday, and most of you actually told me that um uh, you know he is a player that you like, is a player that you think. Uh, if he came in at Arsenal, would be a very good fit. So I'm sorry, I don't believe in that. I don't think in the same way, but it is what it is. We are a community, and we come here to talk about these uh, you know, issues and stories as a community. So Benjamin Sesco is priority, leading the rest, and the, 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 pr the prayer motive and the real reason why he is leading this rest is because of the price. It's 55 million pounds um, you know, cheaper, uh, that is what it's going to cost. Uh, that's around 65 million euros. And his release clause is available this June. So if Arsenal can get the deal done, it's not an easy deal, by the way. Uh, Charles Watts says um, if Mikel Atta wants to get his target, then he has he understands that there are going to be a lot of things to do, right? In terms of, um, you know, in, in terms of getting Arabi Leipzig to sell, uh, maybe not to sell, but, um, you know, to let him go. But also in terms of convincing the player that, uh, you know, to leave Arab Leipzig and join Arsenal, uh, you know, in this summer, right? So let's start off with um, uh, what Charles Watts has said because he's a very, very important journalist and he, he's given us a very massive story uh, on this one. So he says, um, from the discussions he has had um, over the last couple of days, right? He's not sure that Victor Yokores and the likes of Alexander Isak are going to happen. He actually says that I don't think we're going to see a huge transfer fee uh, in terms of financial outlay. I think we will see good transfers from Arsenal, however, not a big transfer. So just to just to recap for you, he says from discussions I have had in the last couple of days, I am not sure that Vyokares will happen and could all could happen. I don't think we're going to see a huge fee in terms of uh, you know transfers in terms of Arsenal. So that's where we are in terms of what Arsenal are looking at, what we are looking for, and how much we are going to spend. And I think this is something that Fabrizio Romano talked about um, you know, a couple of weeks ago when he said Arsenal's striker situation is going to depend on how much Arsenal want to spend, but also it's going to depend on Kai Havers and, uh, and where the club see um, you know, Kai Havers' future. If they look at Kai Havers as one of the players that um, is going to be leading the line, then you're not going to see an 80, 90 million pound, uh, pound you know, striker come in. But of course, if they think um, they need to get a big number nine, a big center forward, and they're willing to spend hundreds of millions on that position, then we're going to see uh, you know, such a player. So Benjamin Sesko is leading, uh, at least uh, as, uh, as for today, as per Charles Words, he is leading and is more likely to join Arsenal in this summer, and he is the name that we might see at the Emirates Stadium. So uh, Charles Words actually talking about him, he says uh, the deal... Uh, for, for, for Ben Sesko is not as easy as people make it out. It's not as easy uh, as people think because, yes, he's got a release clause of around 55 million pounds, but then he's got a team in Arab Leipzig, a club in Arab Leipzig that are dying to protect him. They're dying to keep him uh, because they know this summer they do not have, um, you know, uh, good power or enough power in terms of negotiations right so it's about us not triggering the release clause uh, of sesco it's around 55 million pounds and then agreeing personal terms with the player and then the deal is done right so however what makes this deal very complicated is that there's so many clubs looking at ben sesco there's so many managers looking at ben sesco as one of the key 
products or one of the key ingredients that could be part of their you know processes we are talking about um chelsea who are looking for a striker of course we don't know who their next manager is but there is a possibility Anslot going to liverpool we are not sure that Anslot will not be interested in sesco and we already have two big bids from saudi arabia for benjamin sesco so when you factor in all that when you think about all that um, it's not an easy deal to do Leipzig are still pushing to get him on a new deal because they want to get uh, more more negotiation power when it comes to that time when they want to sell then you have clubs from saudi arabia offering crazy amounts of money uh, to the player and also to uh, you know to arab Leipzig as well and then you've had you know uh, from fabrizio romano there's a lot of interest from the premier league there is a lot of clubs interested um in him from the premier league but what I'm going to say about Sesco is this, and, and what I'm going to say about the deal, not about the player, because I, I think my, my thoughts about the player are very clear. But wh what I think about this deal is it's a deal that Mikel would love to do. It's a deal that suits Arsenal very, very well. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about it in this way. Just, just imagine 55 million pounds. Arsenal are not looking for a main striker, but they're looking for a kind of a, a support striker, a second striker. And we're looking at a guy who is 20 years of age, someone who can be um, an understudy for the next two years until he's 22. Um, there's no pressure on him. Doesn't come at a big price tag. And I think Arsenal can easily make good money and, you know, uh, you know cover whatever we're going to spend on him. Like you can sell Ramsdale, you can sell Emil Smith-Rowe, um, <clears throat> and we'll be able to cover for the cost of the transfer of Ben Sesko. So it's a deal that is very looks very good but for me in terms of the strike in terms of the guy right i am not 100 percent convinced the other day i say that he had scored uh, 14 goals in 38 games he actually scored 14 goals in 31 games um in the german bundesliga but when you when you factor into uh, what he has done in terms of um you know other competitions he's not a bad striker and i'm not saying he's a bad striker i just think that arsenal could do better now his decision has to come in nice and early because if any club is going to sign him they have to sign him before uh, the end of june before the the 30th uh, of june and what does that mean that means that if arsenal cannot get him before the 30th of june his release clause expires and now you either have to negotiate with arab Leipzig, who we are sure and we know at the moment uh, they're not willing to sell so complicated the decision is going to be coming in very soon according to fabrizio um before the euros we will know whether he wants to stay at arab leipzig signs a new deal and you know gets some more money from arab leipzig or he's going to be moving on from arab leipzig and you know going to the premier league because that is where he's destined to go so in terms of ben sesco that's what i wanted to, that's what i wanted to say there is a, a there is um optimism that his decision is going to come out very very soon and there's optimism that his decision could be leaving arab leipzig um in this summer now i think as a player he's got more reasons to want to leave arab leipzig um than stay i think when you look at Mikel Atta's project and you look at jabi alonso's project and you look at um you know maybe the project that Anslot is going to inherit at liverpool and probably you look at this chelsea side which is not actually a very bad side when you look at the projects that are interested in signing this guy, I don't think that he's going to stay. I don't think that he will stay uh, back at Arab Leipzig. I don't think he stays in Germany. I think he's going to go. I think he's going to move on. Um, I think clubs are going to offer him more money than Leipzig offers, and clubs are going to offer him um, an opportunity to play um, at a bigger stage, at a, you know, a higher stage, with, a, with, with higher standards than Arab Leipzig. And that's the problem Leipzig have. Now, they are in the Champions League. They have qualified um, you know, nice and early, which is nice. But I think if Arsenal come in, Arsenal have more to offer to Benjamin Sesko as a young striker. And Arsenal have evidence to back their claims up that despite the fact that you're young that doesn't mean that you're going to be a bench player you look at Saka, you look at martinelli you look at some uh you know all these martin odegaard who are just turning 22 24 25 uh when they came in at arsenal they were around 20 to 23 and they were young influential players who were given a chance to prove themselves and um that's why they're playing in the team so sesco knows that joining a club like arsenal joining a club like my, 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 um chelsea joining a club like maybe i would say liverpool 
that already allows you a chance to play in the Champions League and that already allows you a chance to play in Europe and you're joining one of the best young projects uh, you know, in the world. So I think he will move. I think he will move. I don't think he will stay in Germany. I think he will move, right? But I'm going to be keeping a very close eye, a very, very close eye on that one because it's a story that could develop very quickly, very, very quickly. Now, um, the future of Emil Smith Rowe has been discussed by Charles Boyce as well, and I wanted us to talk about it a little bit. Uh, but before we talk about it, let's talk about uh, Fadi Kadioglu, because, um, again, um, um, uh, Charles Boyce talks about Fadi Kadioglu's deal and the rumors, and he said he, 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 he has confirmation, right, um, from sources in Turkey, not confirmation, but, you know, according to sources in Turkey uh, that he's hearing from, the deal for Fadika Dioglu is almost done, right? However, according to his sources, he doesn't have anything um, regarding Arsenal going in for a bid or Arsenal offering an official bid for Fadika Dioglu. So that's when, that one um, is one to keep an eye on as well. However, and, and one th important thing that um, Ch Charles Watts talks about in this deal is the fact that um, Arsenal are still very much interested, and Mikelata is very much interested uh, in getting in Jorel Hato rather than Fadi Kadioglu. So, in terms of a left defensive option, in terms of uh, you know left defensive uh, reinforcements apart from Jelen uh, Timba, Arsenal will want to get in Jorel Hato because they think as a young centre back. He's got every ingredient you want in him to play out wide like Yusko Givadio, but also in, uh, you know, to, de to deputize inside that back line, inside that um, you know, uh, double pivot uh, of, uh, of, of Gabriel and Saliba if you want him to. So what I am thinking, right, what I am thinking is that if there is anything, if there is anything that is going to happen, right, if there's anything that's going to happen uh, with the left back situation, Arsenal will first try to sign Gerard Hato. If we fail to get Gerard Hato, which is a very difficult deal, by the way, he's just signed a new deal at Ajax. He's up to, I think it runs up to 2028. I'm hearing, just rumors, I'm hearing that Ajax will want to sell a couple of players. Is Gerard Hato part of them? I'm not really sure. But Ajax need to sell. So if Ajax will sell Gerard Hato, I think the priority will be Gerard Hato and then Fadi Kadioglu. But uh, both of them have been really on the radar for Arsenal. Both of them have been tracked by Arsenal since January. And won't be surprised if it is Hato. And I won't be surprised if it is Fadi Kadioglu. I wanted to put that out of the way. Now, Charles Wars has been talking about the future of Emil Smith Rowe. And he, he puts across a very interesting point with Emil, uh, where he says that Emil Smith Rowe is one of the least utilized options in the Arsenal squad. Actually, he's among the top five players that have been util utilized, utilized very, very uh, rarely by Mikel Arteta when they have been available and fit. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that he's going to uh, leave and that doesn't mean that um, it's over for him or the manager doesn't trust him. But at least what we have seen from Mikel Arteta is he will give the players he trusts minutes. A clear example is Jorginho. Jorginho is one of the players that have come in, he's 30, uh, the Premier League is intense and all that, and Mikel Arteta trusts him, and Mikel Arteta believes in him, and he has given him a midfield for, for months, and that midfield has gone on to chase the Premier League, and if maybe Mikel Arteta didn't drop Jorginho against Aston Villa, he would have been a champion. So with Emu smith Rowe, again, I don't want to be the prophet of doom all the time. This is not a channel where we, we proclaim doom. But what I want to say is that as a manager, I am not really sure Mikel Arteta is sure about him. I don't think Arteta is 100% convinced about, um, you know, Emil Smith throw. Does he trust him? Is he going to use him? We wait, right? We wait for it. But I'm not 100% locked in. I'm not 100% sure that we are going to see Emil Smith throw stay. And Charles also says that um, it's the same thing with Albert Sambilakonga, who has already been told it's over, you can go. So the club and the agent of Albert Sambilakonga are, are, are working together to find a solution for the player. So Lokonga and Emil Smith throw, 
both players for me are almost in a very similar position. I think with Emma Smith Rowe, he's been given you know a few glimpses of time, but I don't think him, Nketiah, and Rhys Nelson should be wasting time at Arsenal. I don't think they should be um, wasting any more time at this football club. I don't think. I don't think Emu Smith Rowe is going to come into this Arsenal team and take over from Trossard and take over from Martinelli and take over from Odegaard or Declan Rice. I, I don't see him play in any of those positions. Um, I don't see him as a favorite anymore in, no, in any of those positions. The replacement could be coming from inside, the replacement for Emu Smith Rowe, which is one other reason why I think that he's going to leave, guys. Emu Smith Rowe is going to leave because. The replacement is Ethan Onwari. And when you think about Ethan Onwari, you're talking about um, a hell, a, 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 another Hell End uh, graduate, but a younger player who is willing to come in and, you know, get a few minutes, still comfortable with a few minutes, right? Um, unlike Emma Smith Bro. Emma Smith Bro, with all due honesty, should be in the Euro squad for Gary Southgate and England. Emil Smith Pro should be at the same level, and I'm not saying he should be at the same level as Foden because um, of the age, but because of his ability. But when you look at Arsenal and the way we play, do we have space for a full Foden in our team? I don't think so. I don't think we have space for um, Emma Smith Pro. So Ethan Renneri could come in, enjoy those um, you know last ten minutes, last five minutes of the game um, until you know as he grows into a more important player at Arsenal, a player that the, the manager trusts and believes in, right? So Sesko, the decision should be coming in very 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 soon. We'll be getting to hear from that. No big money signings, uh, according to Charles Words. Uh, looks like looks like we have to work with 40, 50, 60 million pounds round there. As long as the, the transfers are good, I wouldn't really mind, honestly. Speak to you soon.